welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. In this video, we're going to look at the 19, I believe it's 83 version of the musical Annie. No, this is 82. Okay, so this film stars um, Lean Quinn, who's Annie, Albert Finney, who's Daddy Warbucks, Carol Burnett, who's Miss Hannington, um, Anne Ranking, who is Grace Farrell, which is the assistant to um, Daddy Warbucks. Tim Curry as Rooster, who is Miss Harrington's brother. Bernadette Peters as Lily, who is Rooster's girlfriend and con artist. Um, and a few other people that I'm not going to. Um, characters we're going to Jeffrey Holder is Punjab. And Roger Miami is ASAP. I believe these are um, people who help, who work for um, Daddy Warbucks. Now, what this play is about, if you're unfamiliar with, with it, it is based on a Broadway musical that was kind of loosely based. The, the, some of the characters were taken from a comic strip um, called Annie. Um, the main characters that were taken from the comic strip are Annie herself, Warbucks, her dog, Sandy, um, the orphanage owner, and I think that's it. Um, I could be wrong. Um, on top of my top of my head. So this came out in 82. It was decently well received. I mean, it, it's very well known. It did not make its budget back though. <laughs> it just didn't. It was also directed by John Huston, who is not known for musicals. So, um, yeah, it kind of had issues. It is very good. Do I recommend it? Yes. Um, it's very obvious that all the actors have at least um, worked on Broadway. Obviously, um, the young actress playing Annie had, though she's wearing a curly-haired wig that apparently was very, very itchy. <laughs> Curly, red-haired wig. Um, Albert Finney must have. Now, I. this is the second film that I'm actually, he's in that um, I'm reviewing this year. The other one is, strangely enough, is Murder on the Orient Express, where he plays Agatha Christie's created character of um, Perrault. I'm possibly mispronouncing the Belgian detective. Um, and I'm more familiar with him is in um, Anne Brockovich. He plays the uh, lawyer that she <laughs> works for. Um, so, but he shaved his head in this because he's, Daddy Warbucks is bald. He can apparently, as far as I can tell, sing, as can uh, most of the cast. Obviously, Carol Burnett knows how to sing. She's Carol Burnett. If you are not familiar with her, look her up. <laughs> she's a pretty famous comedian. Um, so, but in the course of this story, basically you have Annie. She's an orphan. She believes um, her parents are coming back for her. They live in an orphanage. Um, Mrs. Agatha Harrington, I believe that's what the character's name is. Bring this down. Um, Hannington, Henning, um, I believe Agatha is her first name, but um, pretty much she abuses and starves these children. And there's lots of musical numbers. Most people are, are familiar with um, the song Tomorrow. The thing that's currently stuck in my head from watching these is It's a Hard Not Life which is one of the songs the girls sing when they're caught awake at night, waking up their mistress, and she makes them basically clean them, orphanage. Um, they're starved. They're abused. They're in orphanage. Nobody loves them. They don't know who Santa Claus is. Annie keeps trying to escape because she wants to find, she has like this half a locket, and, she's, and this letter supposedly from the parents who dropped her off. And so she escapes, tries to go find her parents. She's going through New York City. It's the 1930s. So this is kind of, um, I think it's like 1933 or something. And she finds these boys picking on this dog that she ends up rescuing. And then she tells us, like, I don't have any food for you. I'm starving myself. But she ends up rescuing the dog. Then she's brought back to Harrington, who's pissed off um, at her. But then this uh, woman comes. She is the private secretary of 
Mr. Warbucks, who's a billionaire, and he wants to, in order to improve his image, bring a little orphan into his home and do a Christmas thing. So, mm -hmm. sorry, it's 8, 7.52 at night. Um, and so the woman, I believe is Grace, is the name of her character. Yeah, Grace Farrell brings home Annie. And you have, again, more musicals. And she softens his heart. He takes her to the movies. He shows her New York. He wants to adopt her. When she doesn't want to necessarily be adopted because she's looking for his parents, he helps her um, try to find her parents. Now, in come Rooster and Lily, who are, again, Rooster is Herring, Herring's um, brother, and this is his girlfriend. They're looking for money from her. And they can, basically, they come up with this scheme because um, she actually has the rest of the locket. Her, uh, Annie's parents do not. Um, it does turn out that they're dead. But they decide the scene where Rooster and Lily are going to pose as parents and they're going to take the money that Warbucks is offering and so they show up, they take Annie, Harrington's with them, she realizes what the heck is going on, she gets away from them, she rips up the check, she runs off, um, she starts climbing near a railroad, um, and she ends up having to be rescued, and um, it ends kind of on the 4th of July, apparently because they were being filmed uh, in summer, they switched this because in the original Broadway it was Christmas. So, and they didn't, they did not have the money to get more, to basically cover things in snow. So they did the 4th of July. She's rescued, adopted by Warbucks. And he's in love with Grace. So, and that's, and then he makes sure that all her friends are adopted, though that's also through the help of um, Roosevelt, who's in there too. And he's also helping. And they're also the one who find out it's Roosevelt's people who find out that um, Annie's parents were killed in a fire. So, and they go to rescue her. So, oh, it's really kind of the end. This is a very interesting film. It did not do fantastic. And it, didn't, it spent too much money, so it didn't make back. It's make back um, what it spent. So, and there was, again, it, it wasn't seen of as favorable. I think right now, um, IMBD, it's, um, what is it rated? It's a 6.6. .6. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not bad. A lot of people like it. It's a great musical. It's a great family kind of film. It's kind of scary, um, but not much. Apparently when I was reading some of the IMBD stuff, when she's climbing, when Annie's, uh, the actress who's playing Annie is climbing up this ladder or something. There was a hole somewhere and she was afraid she was going to fall. And uh, Carol Burnett forced them to cover it because Carol Burnett actually likes children. <laughs> At least she's a great comedian. Um, she's known for entertaining people. She loves children. She got along with the girls really well. And of course it shows her, again, she, this is a very comedic role. She's not purely evil. In fact, at the end she kind of shows that because her brother Rooster is going to kill Annie. And she's like, no, I may hate this kid, but I do not want her dead. I mean, he can come in with kidnapping her, but I do not want her dead. <laughs> so um, it, it, it's enjoyable. Would I recommend this version? Yes, this is kind of what I would consider the original version. The, the, it's very, very obvious, again, you can hear it in their voices. There's a power in their voices that these people um, have been on Broadway. In fact, I'm gonna, I know Carol Burnett's been on Broadway. I'm double checking if Albert Finney has. Um, drop him into Wikipedia and see if he's actually ever been on Broadway. He is a British actor. Um, has he ever actually been on um, Broadway? Might be. These are films. He was in Screen Actors Guild. 
Was he ever actually on? Yeah, he trained the Grace Shakespeare, the Royal Shakespeare Company. Yep, that explains it. He he definitely has that training. Um, so he he has the training to have that powerful that powerful voice. Uh, Carol Burnett obviously was on Broadway. I'm guessing pretty much all the other actors, including the young actress. Um, had had experience in theater so they have uh, in musical theater so they had that power in their voices that you can really tell I bring this up because I am going to cover a couple of other versions and it comes up in the most recent version which doesn't have that um, so that's the end of this I am going to be covering two more versions of Annie um, and then I'm going to do another video where I'm going to kind of look at all three so I'm not looking at the Broadway play, uh, which apparently did really, really good. And no, the direct creator of the Broadway play does not like any of these versions. So that's the end of this uh, review. If you like what you see, be sure to check out the rest of the channel. Um, I've covered various musicals this year um, from Mary Poppins, The Sound of Music, uh, My Fair Lady. Uh, when else did I have I covered? This is actually the last one I'm covering. Um, Funny Girl. Is that all of them that I covered? My fair, Mary Poppins, Sound of Music, Funny Girl, My Fair Lady, Annie. I don't think I, I cover anything else. I keep thinking my brain is The King and I. There we go. I knew I was forgetting one. <laughs> um, both Funny Girl and The King and I are not really on my favorites list. Um, so this is the last of the musicals that I am covering this year. Um, they balance off some children's books on music. Um, if you're looking, wondering what else I cover and you're new to this channel, I do book series, I do children's books, varies on topics. I've covered LGBTQ this year. I always cover Black History Month every February. I have a tendency to cover the Irish in March and spring stuff because um, March, which is strangely enough when I'm filming this, it's, it's the early March. Um, I covered unicorns this this year for some reason. I have a tendency to cover haunted stuff. I do do book series as well. That's on top of that. I covered this year Princess Diaries. That includes her spinoff series, which is the Notebooks of a Middle School Princess. Two Tamora Pierce series, The Guardians of Dahul. I'm covering Ali Finkel, and then I'm covering. I'm finishing off with Catherine's Lasky's The Wolves of Beyond, and I think the Polar Bear series. So that's what I've covered this year. What's incoming into 2024, um, particularly since I'm filming this, this, you'll be seeing this later in the year. I'm covering three graphic novels on the Animorph series because I cannot find the physical books. I'm covering a whole bunch of Anne of Green Gables stuff, which I'm covering all the books. Four Sullivan um, films, one of which I've never seen. The entire seven... Um, Avon, uh, seven series of Avonlea, which I have not seen since they came out on Disney when I was a child. Um, and then I'm also, besides covering the book series itself, which I believe ends either in Rainbow Valley or Rilla of Ingleside, I'm not sure which. Um, I'm actually going to be covering her short stories, the short stories as well. After that, I'm covering the Boxcar Children, and then I'm going into Rings of Fire. Going into Rings of Fire, very, very blind. Um, as of this, I haven't even sorted those out on uh, book order yet. So I haven't really looked into them. They looked interesting. So um, that's incoming and what's coming up. Um, that's what I've covered. That's what's coming up. I'm still messing around with my themes for the month of 2024. Um, so be sure to stay tuned. I will mention as I solidify those things on videos. Um, so again, like and subscribe. Leave a positive comment if you have one. Thank you.